What is going on everybody? Welcome to another guide for Dwarf Fortress. This is Kotzer Games and today we're going to be talking about stockpiles. I've already made this video one time and thought I posted it, then deleted the footage and somebody commented, they were like, hey, you should rename this, you're talking about animals. And I'm like, what? Got on my channel, turns out I posted my animal farming video with everything for the stockpiles. So there was no footage of the stockpiles and I had already deleted the, the video that I had edited for it. Um, so if you are that person, I forgot to catch your name before I deleted the video, now the notification is no longer there. Thank you. you. You saved my butt. I don't know how, it had like 70 views and like four likes and I'm like, how? why are you guys liking it? It's the wrong video. So I, I appreciate you. I think your account started with a K or something. So hopefully you get this video and this is the actual guide for stockpiles. Um, so this is my main production hub for my fort. Uh, usually when I start a fort, I dig down to a level that I like. I do a three by three and then I build a stockpile around it. I will show you guys how to do all of this. Um, and then I have certain, if you click your stockpile button right here and you click a stockpile, it brings up the information for the stockpile. Um, so I have it on custom and I'm going to show you guys how I like to set up my stockpiles, how you get certain items to move to certain stockpiles. And yeah, I'm gonna show you guys how to do all of this. So number one, let's talk about building the actual or zoning your stockpile. As you can see, my stairs are uncovered. I do this because if you put your stockpile here and then you want to dig further down, the game will not let you. Uh, you have to have your stairs uncovered for them to uh, build any more. Now I could cover them up now if I wanted to, uh, I don't know if they could go up and down. I haven't tested that. So we're going to come down here. I'm going to show you guys how to build the stockpile. We're going to use this block as a, we'll count this as my stairs. So if I wanted to build a new stockpile, I'd go here. I'd hit stockpile. And let's just say I want it right here. So this is the space of my stockpile right now. Now, if I did this, there's no way of removing this one block out of your stockpile, if that makes sense. So... If you're wanting to build around something, you have to start like this. Now I'm going to click accept and I'm going to click this repaint button right here. And now I can do this and it will repaint that same stockpile. And now I have a hole in the middle. So that is how you build a stockpile. And you, if you want to leave spaces. Um, so I could also do this if I wanted to. If you have like a wall or something, but you want all of this area for some reason, stockpile, you can do that. Um, let's go ahead and delete these. Okay, so let's go back up to our main hub. And I'm going to show you guys what I like to do. This is my stockpile. So this stockpile has been here since I started the board. It was my very first one. And I'm going to show you guys how I like to set them up. So if we click the U, we click the stockpile button and open up our stockpile. As you can see, this is stockpile number one and I have it set to custom. So let me explain all these little options that you have with the stockpile. These all right here are your categories. So if I just wanted wood, I could click wood. If I just wanted any and every stone, I could click this button. If I wanted all cloth and thread, I could click cloth. Um, if I wanted absolutely everything, I don't care, put it in here, I can click all. Um, I don't recommend doing that and I'm, I'm gonna explain why. So your other options are renaming it. So I could rename this like main stockpile. Uh, your repaint button, which we have used. Your remove stockpile button, which we have also used. This is toggling whether or not stockpile items can be taken from anywhere or only from specific workshops and piles. So if I click this, I can only pick up stuff from certain piles. If I click this, I can grab stuff from anywhere. It's active. Um, so that is one of your options. The other option here is set from which workshops and stockpiles this stockpile gives and takes items. So this, if you had this turned off, this is how you tell it. I only want you taking from, let's say, this stockpile or this one. And I'm going to show you guys how to use that in just a second. Next is this little barrel icon. If you click this, this tells you how many barrels, bins, and wheelbarrows you're allowed to have in here. By default, barrels and bins will be set to the max amount of slots. So I have 80 slots in this area. So the barrels and bins will use up all 80 slots if you know the game goes on that far um and i can also change how many wheelbarrows if you have like a stone like a place where you store a lot of stone like for instance let me see if i can find it for instance right here 
if I wanted to, I could say, hey, put five wheelbarrows in here. Because moving stone, it's a very heavy item, and wheelbarrows do help it a bunch. Let's talk about this next thing. Let's talk about what we're going to set this first stockpile to. We're going to click custom. I like doing this because if you have corpses or refuse items in a stockpile, the game for some reason thinks, oh, this is a trash pile. It's a trash pile because there's body parts, there's bones, skulls, shells, hair and wool, teeth, uh, corpses of things, skeletons. This is a trash pile. Therefore, anything that has a quality, like a, um, what would you call it? Anything that can be broken in game, I'm trying to think of the word for it, um, but anything that can be broken in game, like armor, weapons, uh, bags, I'm trying to think some other stuff but like stuff that has a value to where it can be broken or it's good, those items, if they're in a trash pile, degrade significantly faster, like within the year. And I had issues when I first started playing, it was like I would make a whole bunch of iron armor and then my iron armor would be broken within a year and my people would have no iron armor to wear it. And I'd be like, where is it going? And I would find it and it'd all be broken. I'm like, wow, they're just training. How are they going through armor like this? And it's because they were storing it in a stockpile where I had a couple of these refuse items selected. Um, refuse is broken. All of these items here, you can also find in furniture. You can find them in finished goods and armor, ammo. So refuse just means this is no good. These are the crowns that are no good because the good ones are in finished goods. So that's how, that's how you have to think about these two items, corpses and refuse. I turn them off in my main stockpile because I don't want anything degrading for no reason. To do that, as you can see, all of these are selected. I would just click finish goods and hit all. I want everything. And I'm gonna explain how these work and your other options here in a second. Corpses, you just click this button, go none. And then uh, refuse. Honestly, when I mean, when you start it up, let's say we make this pile for the first time, we're gonna click it. We're gonna hit custom. I'm going to click all and then I'm going to come down here, hit none and hit none here. So this tab means I'm selecting none out of here, which all of these are just tabs for these. So we're getting nothing out of all of this, uh, which is what you're wanting. All right. Next, we're going to talk about moving certain items, certain stockpiles. As you can see, like my craft workshop has bones behind it. My farmer and kitchen have a bunch of food barrels behind it. My butcher has meat barrels. My fish person has fish barrels. Craft, what is this? Carpenter, I almost said craft dwarf. My carpenters have wood behind there, so it's easy access to just grab this and work on something. The same thing with my stone people, mechanics. You're getting the picture. Um, so when I am putting in a workshop stockpile or some, somewhere where I want to store a specific item, let me show you how you do that. Like, like I said before, Go ahead and click it. You can, if there's an empty space, you can just click. It automatically selects the stockpile. It's the only thing there to select. So, as you can see, this one is refuse selected. Um, but I'm going to click custom. I'm going to show you guys why. Uh, so, skulls are used to craft totems. Bones are used to craft bone crafts. Uh, a whole bunch of different stuff. And then shells are used to craft shell crafts. So, when I have my craft dwarfs workshop i like to have refuse selected and then hit all on skulls all on bones and all on shells and that will tell the stockpile you're only bringing in these items now the issue is if you just do that with this stockpile bones and skulls and stuff will still be in here they won't Im immediately go over here so how to get them out of your main stockpile and into your workshop stockpile is you click this little button with the stockpile icon and the plus sign. You click this, like if I hit, if I hit X, I'll show you guys how to do it. If I hit X, there's there's three options here. You got it done, and then this one is giving items. See the little green arrow? It's leaving the stockpile. That means if I have bones in the stockpile, I want to send them somewhere else. Now this other icon, which is that's not what we want to do. We want them here. This other icon with the green arrow coming into the stockpile means go grab this item. 
or these items that we have selected here. These are what we want to grab and bring to this stockpile. So I'm gonna click this and it says select a stockpile or workshop to take from. So I'm gonna select stockpile one. Just click it, um, this will pop up. And now this is telling my stockpile, I want you to grab bones, shells, skulls, the ones we have selected and pick them up from stockpile one because this is where all of my inventory comes into and then it splits off into these workshops. Now I'll give you another example. Um, if we go here to my tanning workshop, this is my, oh uh, no, yes, this is my tanner. Um, I'm gonna show you guys what I did here. So I did custom, I went all leather. This is where my uh, butcher harvests an animal and then the raw hide comes to my tanner, which then I can flesh out and turn it into leather. So what I have here is I have this, oh, I don't have anything selected. I'm a liar and a thief. All right, so we would select, so we can set this up now. We would hit select. We were gonna grab leather from butcher shop because when an animal comes in, they get harvested, the raw hide will be waiting there in the butcher shop. Then I can click this button, bring it in again. I'm gonna go stockpile number one. So now, whenever my dwarves are free and they have nothing else to like go do, they will haul and they will grab all leather bins and leather items out of bins or leather out of bins and we will move it into this stockpile. So that, that is another um, way of doing things. Now let me show you guys another thing. Uh, this will probably look confusing for a second, but I'm gonna explain it. So we're gonna click stockpile and we'll click this. So this is my finished bars of metal stockpile. Um, if I click custom, bars and blocks have been selected, bars metal, all. Um, I don't need anything else out of blocks or bars, just metal. Now this is interesting because this stockpile here with all of these bins is also this stockpile with all of these bins. And I'm gonna show you guys how we do this. We're gonna go back down here to our testing area. We're gonna create a stockpile just any size, however big you want it, click accept. Now, stockpiles are cool. They don't have to be a single block. If we hit repaint and do another one right here, this is the same stockpile. You see how there's only one sign? Now, if I want wood here, I can select the wood category and you see that sign, let me zoom in, that sign changes the wood. It can change the stone, sheets, leather. You see how it kind of tells you what category you're working with. But if I select this, this is stockpile 38. If I select this, this is stockpile 38. It is the same stockpile. So any rules that you make for this stockpile will go for both. So this is what I have done here for my bars, here for my piles of wood. For some reason, I cannot get any charcoal or lignite in this game, So I or coal or lignite in this game, and I've been having to hand process charcoal this entire playthrough, and it has been a pain. So I have wood piles behind here for my wood kilns and they are the same. So then these places in front of the workshop are my charcoal and coke, which I actually need to do this with. As you can see, I kind of built a whole bunch of stuff piles and did not follow my own rules. I'm going to go over another thing real quick. The uh, armor and the weapons and stuff that I was talking about earlier that can degrade over time. Um, if in your barracks, you should have armor stands and weapons for all of your dwarves. That way they can keep their stuff neat and tidy. Um, but this is my stockpile here that I have for any type of ammo. All armors. Um, I can actually undo unusable armor. That's fine. Um, and then weapon traps. I'm going to go unusable weapons. So let's talk about this stuff real quick. I'm going to go to weapons because it's a little bit easier to explain. So... When you're looking at these tabs, this tab says these are all of the weapon options that you have. So we want all of those. Trap components, we want all of these. Now, after you get out of weapons and trap components, when it says metal, stone, other materials, this is what these items, my weapons and trap components, are made out of. So I can select weapons, but if this is the only thing selected out of here, nothing's coming into the stockpile. You have to tell the game, I want all weapons and all trap components made out of metal, stone, 
and other materials. Now, if I don't want weapons made out of clear glass, deselect it. That means, or if I just wanted weapons made out of bone, I could do this. I could deselect all of these, tell them no weapons of stone, no weapons of metal. But I do want all that, so I'm gonna click all on these. I want any weapon made out of anything. Now, after you get to other materials, you have this core quality, total, and then usable weapons. Uh, you do want usable weapons in here. Core quality. Um, honestly, you can deselect artifact. Um, if you don't want artifact weapons making it into like a storage area, if you just want to display them, deselect this artifact. So now what we are telling the game is I want weapons made out of metal, stone, or other materials, anything. And I want any weapon made out of any material that is from standard to masterwork quality. So ho hopefully that makes sense. It is a little complicated until you kind of sit down and try to figure it out. But this is why I'm making the guide because it took me a little while to figure this out. Now I'm going to show you a couple stockpiles that I like to have personally whenever I start a game. Um, as you can see, here is my trading post. Uh, right next to it is a stockpile. In this stockpile, I like to go to finished goods. And I like to choose out items that I trade a lot. So when I have bones or shells, I turn them into crafts. Crafts can produce amulets, bracelets, crowns, earrings and figurines, rings, scepters, rings and scepters. And then any large gems or totems that I make, I also want them to bring them up here. Now, I'm telling the game, take these items that I craft because I have no use for them in my fort. Take these items, made out of stone or clay, metal, gem, or other materials, of any quality. I should probably turn off artifact. As you can see, again, I don't follow my own rules sometimes. Sometimes I kind of get ahead of myself and I forget about this piece. Um, so I want these items made out of anything with this quality. I want them all brought up here. And I also want my cut gems brought up here. So as you can see, click cut gems. All of these are selected. And this allows me to have all of my items of value that I want to trade by my trading post. So somebody, if I say, hey, move some items here, they'll just grab it, throw it onto this table, and they're good to go. Then my trader can come up and do the trading. Another thing I like to have is wherever I am farming, I like to have stockpiles, which only carry seeds. Um, I do this so that my farmers don't need to walk a whole bunch to Put seeds down now if i also wanted to increase the amount of places they had to walk i would also put stockpiles around the edges and i would turn those into plants that way my farmer can grab seeds plant grab the plant throw it into the stockpile and then my hauler can come up grab that barrel with food in it and bring it down to my main area to get processed and cooked and last but not least, another stockpile that I really like to have is just anywhere where I'm going to be using a lot of furniture. Um, I like to create a stockpile where, so this furniture stockpile is fixated on my barracks construction. So if I click custom, you will find armor stands, boxes, siege ammo, weapon racks, and I, there was supposed to be, no, I didn't put beds, okay. So this is stuff that I just, use for my barracks crap building a barracks room and i told them i want it made out of everything even the core qualities total qualities honestly if you keep on track of that artifact thing and you see my people made artifact or you can go to this object selection screen i know you can't see it my things up above it but the little necklace icon on the bottom left hot bar if you click that you can see all of your artifacts and then you can go find them and put them on display now that you know their name and what they are. So you don't have to worry about clicking off that artifact quality, but I do recommend it if you want your artifacts in a certain place. So here is another example of that furniture stockpile I was talking about. If I click this and go to custom, as you can see, I've selected furniture and siege ammo. These are all of the items that I want in here. This is just general furniture for my fort. I want them made out of everything. Again, you don't have to worry about that artifact. I don't want them in here, but you don't have to worry about it if you are just going to look up 
what item it is in the name and go put it on display. So yeah, I hope this helped you guys out. I hope I could I could explain stockpiles in a way that is easy to understand for you guys. If you guys enjoyed it or helped you out, leave a like, subscribe. I'm a small channel. It helps me out a ton. This time, I'm going to make sure that this video is correctly uh, uploaded with the thumbnail and title that goes with it. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in another episode. Peace.